Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and today I'm going to talk about one of Games Workshop's most recent releases, Legions Imperialis. So it's been a few weeks since its debut, and in a recent video, you might have caught Kira and me tackling the marine half of the starter set. It was fun, especially considering it's the first full epic scale release in over 20 years. Whilst we have seen various epic game systems, the opportunity to command both Space Marines and Titans simultaneously hasn't come around in quite some time. I actually got so hyped for Epic that I started playing Final Liberation again, an awesome epic scale computer game from the 90s. The thought of recreating those battles on the tabletop had me pumped. There is one problem. Games Workshop decided to set Legions Imperialis in the Horus Heresy period. And as far as I know, there are no plans to introduce factions outside of this historical setting. Currently, we have Titans, Solar Exilia and Marines in the mix. And I have to ask the question, why? While my grasp of Games Workshop's internal politics may be a little hazy, I do think this has something to do with the battle between specialist game studios and the main studio. Regardless of the reasons for this decision, I do think the lack of diversity makes it a lot harder to introduce new players to the game, myself included. Fear not, there is an answer. You just have to go back in time to find it. I've been lucky enough to hunt down some epic models from the late 80s and early 90s. For me, Titan Legion was my first introduction to epic miniatures, and I still remember now in Games Workshop Peterborough seeing huge tables with tons of different models on it and just remembering that it looked so cool. Oddly, I do feel slightly weird about cracking open these brand new blister packs and boxes, but I mean, What's the point of the models if it's not to put them together? These guys have been waiting for 40 to 30 to 40 years to be assembled and painted. So today I'm going to do that justice and give them some paint jobs. I've actually got quite a wide array of different miniatures and the epic models from over the previous years actually feature pretty much everything you can get in an orc army and more. Whether it's small orc boys, grots, Gretchen, commandos, storm boys, bikes, buggies, boar boys, tanks, dreadnoughts, I've already said that, stompers and killer cans, everything is there, you just need to have a look for it. We all know of course that red makes them go faster, so any of the buggies and bikes are going to be in red, and everything else is going to be in black, ready to be painted up as goths. There are of course other colours you could choose, yellows, blues, um, but I just felt like goths are kind of the primary, the, the ultramarines of the orcs, right, the poster boys, so let's, let's give them a paint job, get some checks on there and see how they look at the end. As an added bonus to this video, I'm also going to be checking out Wave 2 from the Too Thin Coats paint range by Duncan Rhodes and Transatlantic Games. I haven't yet given these a go, but I figured they've got a fair few paints in there we can try out, so I'm going to try and use these for the majority of the paint jobs. First up, it's dry brushing or overbrushing on some of these orc models. The blacks themselves look a little flat without any colour added. so. Go very gently, very carefully and very lightly with the greys and make sure there's barely any paint on your brush because the models are so small, one big splotch of grey kind of looks terrible. Be really careful, take your time and you'll end up with a bit more colour and a bit of diversity at least to your flat black painted miniatures. Then it's in with some edge highlighting. Again, gently, lightly, carefully. You could of course do this as a dry brush but I just wanted to polish off and pick out a few sharper edges with the lightest of the greys. Honestly, that took no time at all. Just remember these models are tiny and we're zoomed really, really tight in on the camera. Going over some of the metal parts, I'm just using one of the silvers from the Duncan paint range just to start adding some details. And whilst we're doing that, let's take a second to look at this video's sponsor. Welcome to Star Trek Fleet Command, the free to play 4X MMO game that puts you in control. Picture this, an open world that spans from the Alpha to Omega Quadrant, offering you the freedom to explore, engage and expand your territory. And the best part, it's available on both desktop and mobile, so you can boldly go where no one has gone before, no matter where you are. With stunning graphics, you'll be able to recruit legendary characters like Captain Kirk and Spock, command iconic ships like the USS Enterprise, and utilize advanced Star Trek tech in epic battles with players worldwide. Ready to embark on your own adventure? Simply click the link in the description or scan the on-screen QR code to download the game. Unlock exclusive rewards with the special promo code WARPSPEED and receive a complimentary new player content pack, including 10 epic shards of Kirk to enhance your gaming experience. Ensure you redeem these rewards before you reach level 10 to make the most of your interstellar adventure. For step-by-step -step instructions on applying the code, check out the details in the description. So what are you waiting for? Use my link or scan the QR code to receive a special starter pack. Right, let's get back to the video. 
I'm going to come straight in and paint up some orcs. Now there is a rather significant difference between the orcs on the 89 set and the orcs on the later Epic 40k set. And indeed there is a huge difference between those orcs and the space marines from Imperialis, but we'll get to that a little later. Starting off using the goblinoid green, I'm just painting in some of the flesh details on these models. Then using a red to add a splash of colour because I thought the models looked a little drab at this point, I'm just painting in some red on the backs of the models and anywhere I think it'll stand out without taking too much attention away from the army as a whole. I think that's a huge part of painting models at this size, is to make sure nothing detracts from the general larger picture, but also individual pieces don't look dull and boring. I ended up doing, I think, just three colours on most of these orcs, and that seemed to do the trick. Adding a little wash over the skins and over the metals, and a highlight if you really want to go there, but I don't think they need it. It does take ages, and I did do a lot of work off camera just to get things looking right, because you don't want to see every single step. You clip the models off the bases, they have these giant circles, I guess we'll deal with that a little bit later. Painting the red models, it's pretty much the same process, but using blacks instead of reds. A touch of green skin to break them up. I think the army as a whole is looking okay at the moment. I'm not blown away by the blacks. It looks a tad boring, but there aren't a lot of other things I could do, or certainly not at this point, to make them more interesting. They look just fine. I, I wish I'd maybe added some of the yellow boys in as well, just to add some splash of colour. But we can base them. I've got some bases left over from the Legion's Imperialis set when I did the Space Marine, so I'm just super gluing these down and gluing them on. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to do about these giant bases that each individual model is on, because they do seem to take away from the full vibe of the basing. And I guess I can go back in and paint them light grey to try to match them up, but they're still going to look like they're stood on another lump. Then we get to the Guts of Goths and that is checked patterns. I'll admit, I'm not great at doing checked patterns anyway, and I'm not overly convinced I can do a good job on them at this scale. So why not jump back to transfers? A super easy way to add some color and break up these models without too much effort. It takes a bit of time to cut them to the right size and a bit of fiddling to get them on, but using some good products, you can really start to add some color to the army and suddenly things feel like they're coming together. I also had some yellow transfers for the Evil Sons, the, the red bikers and buggies, and that seemed to do a huge amount for those, despite it being an awkward, super fiddly process. I was happy with that bit. Then I had another thought about the bases. Okay, let's forget about the grey concrete and let's go orky. Let's go muddy and let this would be a great way using these texture paints from AK Interactive. They are available at our shop at broadsidewargaming.com in the links below. That's just a quick little shill there for you. But these are a great way to fill in the height difference between the bases and the bases of the models. I gave everything a varnish and then I'm just going over highlighting all of the edges I want to make pop. This bit again takes absolutely ages and is pretty boring, but is instrumental in making the army look better. Another idea hit me, let's bang some pigments on. Let's brighten up those bases and add some definition between the floors and the models. And orcs, kind of like that Gork and Morkery Badlands desert vibe anyway, you could just mash a load of pigment on, seal it in, and away you go. And we're pretty much there with the army. I couldn't not use it. I love Dirty Down Rust. I use this on everything. Just make sure you have a hairdryer, warm the model, warm the paint, whack it on, as thin as thick as you like, and this will just break up the blacks a little bit more and add some weathering to the white parts as well. And this is the completed set. I know that last 30 seconds seemed like a lot, and it really did all come together in those last steps, but I'm so much happier with them now than I was one minute ago in this video, or for me, like a week ago. What do you think to the army? What do you think to the models? They didn't take me that long. I'd say maybe three decent sessions. And when you pair them up against the new Legion's Imperialis base means, yes, the orcs look like little babies, but the dreadnoughts kind of match up in size and some of the tanks aren't a million miles away from the predators. It is an option to add more variety to the epic games. And these models are beautiful and full of so much character. It would seem a shame not to use them. I'm actually going to work on a specific rule set for the Orcs. We have the baseline stats and points for humans and space marines, so with a bit of tweaking, I reckon I could make an army list that would work for this game. If you'd love to see those rules, let me know in the comments below. And take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.